I hope we're on. Hi, this is uh, Bernadette Howard, and I am part of our staff here at Pennsylvania Parks and Forests Foundation, and we are celebrating um, Earth Day. This week is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and we wanted to celebrate by doing all kinds of different things, and we are um, helping you enjoy yourself at home by reading books to you. Today, I'm going to read the story of Verity the Snake. Let me see here, or you can see it, and it is by Janelle Cannon. So sit back, make yourselves comfortable, and I'll read to you. This is Verdi. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verity ventured into the treetops to look for them. Now, so you can get a good look at Verity. I'm going the wrong way here. He liked his yellow and black stripes. He did not want to be green. <clears throat> so he went into the forest. There you get a better picture that way. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verity peered at their droopy, droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you, asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his tail as he waited to speak. You see <clears throat> how big and green the older snakes were? There's three snakes here. So Verdi was tapping the tune with his tail. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verity couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. I guess they weren't very pleasant to be around. They weren't, didn't have any energy, didn't want to do anything. But hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verity slipped away. He came to another one. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, but they were rude. I wouldn't want to grow up to be one of them either, would you? At the top of a very tall tree, Verity gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verity let go. Oh my goodness. So he let go 
and he flew. And he flew through the air. There he goes. From a distance, the old greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Now, a molt is when a snake sheds its skin. I guess they do this a number of times. So according to the greens, he wasn't going to last very long, was he? Because he kept flying through the air and want to hurt himself. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. And Umbles moaned, he may not live to turn green. And you can see him here. He's flying through the air. He's got to land somewhere, right? But one day, Verity's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. <gasps> oh, how can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Poor thing, he really doesn't want to turn green, does he? Verity flung himself into the water. If I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. You see, you got the good picture. Uh-oh. I don't, if you can see this. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising the murky depths. Yum, the old fish hummed. That's lunch. Well, he better get himself out of there pretty quick, shouldn't he? Before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. <gasps> a poof! With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping onto the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. Wow, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green. He decided to leave the mud on. So then he turned into brown steak. With the soft brown muck, dried into a hard gray shell, and Verity could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. See, it's coming off here. As each piece fell away, Verity could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verity. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Here he goes again. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight. Sure, the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verity forgot that he would fall back to earth. Uh-oh. 
whippity whoppity flip flap wham plummeting through the trees verity landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest floor he could not move help he croaked he had really done it to himself good that time Oh boy. As usual, the Greens had been watching everything Verdi did. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this? Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Lucky thing, he's still got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. You see all three snakes are, are carrying him to where he needs to go so that he could heal himself. And look how they fixed him up in this picture. They splintered him, splinted. Neatly splinted to a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor, Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller then, you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. Verity was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Well, Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life, a warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The Greens rambled on about their days of glory and Verity settled in on his branch. So they kind of tied him to the branch until his body healed. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, looks like you're ready to go again. He carefully untied Verity from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie, and Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest, but Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down, and he listened to the forest come alive. You see here, it gets dark. You can see the moon. There's, there's a possum over here. And a bird that comes out at night. I'm not exactly sure what that kind is. But you can see here that all the insects, it looks some kind of grasshopper type, a praying mantis maybe. But he listened to the night sounds. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. I guess he's been there some time because all of a sudden Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by without seeing him. Here's Verdi right here, nice and green. And the chipmunk doesn't even know he's there. Wow, look how he's changed. 
One fine morning, as Verity basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and they fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. <clears throat> Verity thought, they're just like I used to be, thought Verity. And now what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb, climb trees with me? He asked the snakes. With you, the yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Verity replied. Though was, he was a little worried about putting his eye out. And as you can see, with practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. So you could still do all the fun things, even though you grow up and you change. So thank you guys for spending time. But I have a few little fun facts that I wanted to tell you about. Did you have any idea that there are 25,000 different species or types of snakes in the world? That's a tremendous amount. I, I just can't even believe that there's 25,000. And some of them are, they only get four inches long, that's it. And then some grow to be 33 feet long. That's about as long as three or four cars, large cars, parked line by line. Can you imagine that, a snake being that long? I personally would not want to get anywhere near that. Most snakes are uh, carnivores, which means that they eat meat, they eat other animals, they eat fish, eggs, insects, um, birds, rodents, and some of them can go months without eating. They, um, one meal lasts them a very long time. I'm sure none of you kids are like that, right? You want to eat every 10 minutes. If you ever come across a snake, admire them, don't go near them, don't disturb them, because you can't tell a lot of them, you can't tell if they're venomous, which means poisonous to you or not. So you admire them and you walk the other way. Verdi, the snake that we just read about, he is from the family of giant non-venomous snakes called pythons. They hatch from eggs and they are only eight inches long when they're born, when they come out of their eggs. And they can grow up to six feet. And after several molts, which remember we said when they molt, they shed their skin. That's what takes their skin off. And every time they do that, they become a slightly different color. And their skin changes from a beautiful yellow to a beautiful green, rich green. So thank you so much for spending time with us today. And, um, Please celebrate the Earth Day, plant some trees, plant some flowers. Um, remember to take care of the Earth we have. It's the only one that we have. And um, again, I just thank you for being with me. Okay, goodbye. Have a wonderful week. Bye.